Hi, I'm Mark Labar, and we're here again at the Green Mountain Audubon Center, my backyard. Last time we were here, we talked about some of the birds that you could see around my house, song sparrows, chickadees, bluebirds, and some of the things that you could do to help those. Today, we're gonna to take a walk up into our sugar woods where we make maple syrup. As you can see, it's the end of the season. We're washing our buckets, we're putting things away, and we'll shut the, sh the uh, sugar house down for the year. Our sugar woods are bird-friendly maple. We manage them for the birds that use these woods during the summer months uh, when we're not sugaring. Now, one of the birds uh, that our sugar woods, or in particular, our sugar house, lets us know is here is the yellow-bellied sapsucker. Now, I don't know if we'll hear one today, but I'll try to replicate what the sound of the yellow-bellied sapsucker is. We know it's here because it likes to use the tin roof on top of the sugar house in order to drum. Woodpeckers drum instead of singing as a way to defend their territories as well as attract mates. Now the yellow-bellied sapsucker is one of our migrant woodpeckers and its drumming is kind of unique in that it kind of tails off at the end. So let's see if I can do it here on one of our sap buckets. So it starts out. and it slowly settles down. Now the sap sucker you might notice when you're out in the woods um, often leaves little holes nicely lined up in the trees um, where it uh, allows that sap to come out. Uh, insects get sucked to it and that's one of the ways that it gets food. So now let's head up into our sugar woods and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the species you might see uh, this time of year. So here we are in the Green Mountain Audubon Center sugar woods or sugar bush, which is the area that we go out and collect sap in order to make maple syrup. Now it's important for that, but it's also important for a whole number of different bird species that use this during the summer months for breeding. We'll talk about them later as they arrive. But right now there's a couple of birds that I'd like to point out, uh, which you can find as you walk around your woods. Uh, one of those, uh, which I call the sugar bird, is the brown creeper. This is a small bird that um, the song starts with a single note at the beginning and then a big warble. Uh, it's often singing while we're gathering buckets. Uh, it slowly creeps, as its name implies, up trees, finding food in the crevices of the bark. This is one of our sugar maples, which we've tapped this year. We removed the tap of the bucket uh, to allow this tree to uh, close up its sugar hole and we'll tap it again next year. Uh, so keep an ear out for the creeper, the brown creeper, or the sugar bird. Another bird that you might see in the sugar woods as you're walking around is the junco. Now the junco is a small little bird with a gray back and a white underbelly. And uh, the one really significant feature that you can tell when they fly away, uh, they have two white outer tail feathers. And so if you see a bird uh, that trills, makes a long trill and then flies away with two outer tail feathers white, you'll know you're seeing a junco. So our sugar woods are really diverse. And one of the things that we work to leave in our sugar woods are dead snags. You can see this is one of our old sugar maples um, that the top has fallen off, but it still provides important nesting and food sources for the birds uh, that use our sugar woods. Things, cavity nesters uh, like woodpeckers, chickadees uh, will use it for nesting. Uh, many birds will feed on this dead snag. So we leave snags up around our sugar woods as well um, to provide that opportunity. And while I was standing here, I did hear one more bird, uh, the lawnmower bird or the ruffed grouse, also known here in Vermont as a partridge. And I could tell, I call it the lawnmower bird because it uses its wings to create a, a percussion sound that you can hear throughout the woods. Uh, oftentimes, uh, the ruffed grouse will stand up on dead logs. So again, as this tree uh, you know, slowly dies and falls down, they'll use that as their drumming location. And the reason I call it a lawnmower bird is it sounds like a lawnmower. It goes dum 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 so it kind of sounds like a lawnmower starting up, uh, but that's another sound that you'll often hear wandering around your woods. 
So here we are kind of in the depths of uh, our sugar woods. We're on the back side and we're very close to Sherman Hollow Brook. But this is the haunt uh, of another really small bird, the winter wren. Now lately, as I've been walking around my backyard, the Green Mountain Audubon Center, I've been hearing the winter wren starting to sing. Uh, again, a tough bird to see, but this bird has a big voice. Uh, it sings and sings and sings, and it likes kind of these hemlocky dark stands um, where it will spend its time and nest. So another bird to listen for when you're out walking your backyard. Now our sugar woods, uh, because it's bird friendly, has a vast diversity of tree species that are in here. And they're all of different heights. Our big sugar maples uh, provide the canopy. And we've lo got lots of other trees that are shorter and lower for mid-story birds. Here's a bunch of hemlocks that are in a colder spot of the sugar woods. And one of the birds that we've been seeing here is the golden crowned kinglet. Uh, this is a very, very small bird, very quick. Even with a pair of binoculars, it's kind of tough to see. But it does have a real high little trill. Uh, and if you can get a look at them, they're a spectacular little bird with a golden crown right on the top. So, as you can see, a little chilly here today, but I'm looking on the ground. I can see trout lily coming up. I can see spring beauties. So not only are the birds coming back, uh, but the forest is coming alive uh, here at the Green Mountain Audubon Center. Join us next time as we'll visit one of our wetland areas and talk about some of the species we might see there.